free. You may close your eyes and prepare your body for a guided meditation. Your eyes are gently closed. You stop seeing. Imagine that all other sense doors are also closed, including imagining things, not by force, but by understanding that. There is nothing outside needs your attention. <clears throat> Allow them to come and go and you don't sell tea to any of these visitors. It's like a city center where people come and go. Without leaving a footprint. When everything begins to calm down, you may notice your body is breathing normally. Your attention may go to that one thing that is moving. You may still take a moment to relax your body, your shoulders relaxed, your back of back, your back is relaxed, sitting bones relaxed. And your mind relaxed.
to relax your mind further. You apply mindfulness as you breathe in and breathe out. And that means you notice the beginning, starting point of your breath and the ending of your breath. And you also notice the feelings, sensations of your breath touching your skin through your nostrils and that continuous flow Mindfully you breathe in, mindfully you breathe out. This may feel like a lot of doing, but when you find the rhythm of your breath, you are just being with it. And attention may go simply to noticing your breath touching your skin. To take a different route, we may also add 
This other exercise to notice long or short breaths as they happen. Inhaling or exhaling, long or short. <clears throat> you are simply aware of your inhaling and exhaling as they happen. To go a step further, you may now notice the rhythm of your breath body. Shoulders moving along with your breath. This rhythmic pattern is so noticeable as you stay still in your body. With your attention inwardly directed.
With loving kindness to this body, we may just continue breathing in, tranquilizing the bodily formations that includes in breath and out breath. Attention to the body slowly disappears. As the body calms down, notice the light around us, moving away from the body to the mind, and expanding our awareness to the radiant light outside of us. With that noticeable light, we radiate positive, loving kindness. We have the intention to do so in all directions, starting from your being. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be safe. All visible and invisible beings near and far away known to me and not known to me Those beings who are perpetually hungry,
those beings with excess amount of food but unable to eat. Those moderate eaters, carnivorous and not. Microscopic beings. Beings in other galaxies. Mighty beings with mighty awareness. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. Or you stay quietly as you, until you hear the gong. And we will end this guided meditation there.
So for teachings part, just there is a short teaching. Um, this is from the Dhammapada. Dhammapada is the um, the handbook of Buddhists. It has verses of the teachings given by the Buddha on various occasions. And for today's teaching, we will take number 40. Um, and um, I would translate the meaning first. Knowing that this body is fragile, like an earthen, earthen jar, making one's mind secure like a fortified town, one should fight the evil with the weapon of knowledge. After defeating the evil, one should still continue to guard one's mind and feel no attachment to that which has been gained. And the Pali goes as Kumbhupa Mankaya Mimang Viditva Nagarupa Mang Chitta Midang Tapitva Yodeta Marang Panya Yudena Jitancharakhe Anivesanosya. And there's a little story behind this. While residing at the Jetavana Monastery, the Buddha uttered verse 40 of this book with reference to 500 monks. These 500 monks from Savatthi, after obtaining an object of meditation from the Buddha, traveled for a distance of 100 yojanas. So yojana is a long distance actually. Um, a measure of length about 12 miles. One yojana is 12 miles. So 100 is about 1200. It was away from Savati and came to a large forest grove, suitable place for meditation practices. The guardian spirit of the trees dwelling in that, that forest thought that if those monks were staying in the forest, it would not be proper for them to live with their families in the tree. So just imagine these guardian spirits living in trees. So they, it's like angels. So they descended from the trees thinking that monks would stop there only for one night. But the monks were still there at the end of the fourth night. Then it occurred to them that monks might be staying there till the end of the rainy season. In that case, they and their families would have to be living on the ground for a long time. So they decided to frighten away the monks by making ghostly sounds and frightful as ap apparitions. They showed up with bodies without heads and with heads without bodies. Just don't try to imagine all that. The monks were very upset and left the place and returned to the Buddha. On hearing their story, the Buddha told them that this had happened because previously they went without any weapon and that they should go back there armed with a suitable weapon. Having said that, the Buddha taught them the weapon of loving kindness, beginning with this teaching. Monks were instructed to recite this <clears throat> time to time in the forest and enter the monastery and practice meditation. And these guardian spirits of trees received this powerful loving kindness from the monks <clears throat> and they reciprocated by welcoming them and not harming the monks. <clears throat> With that, ghostly sounds disappeared and the sights of ghosts also disappeared. Thus, the forest became peaceful and monks were able to focus and meditate on the impermanent nature of the body. 
the Buddha from his super supernormal power learned about the progress of the monks <clears throat> and sent forth his radiance, making them feel his presence. The, the Buddha said, monks, just as you have realized, the body is indeed impermanent. And then the Buddha stated further, knowing that this body is fragile, <clears throat> like a mud pot, making one's mind secure, like a well-secured town, one should fight the evil with the weapon of wisdom knowledge and wisdom, and continue guarding one's mind so that no harm comes your way. At the end of this teaching, five, all the 500 monks purified their minds from defilements. Okay, that is the reading and the <clears throat> what stood out for you, if you remember any of that. Have you heard anything like this before? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess what sticks out. Um, Bribing loving kindness is a weapon. Yeah. Fathers. Right. Or curious about what I guess yeah, it's kind of uh, something that cuts through something. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> With the weapon we have a specific purpose, but this weapon cuts through anger. Um, I would think that that is one way to look at it. Also, now that monks are monks, that they cannot use actual weapons, right? Like when we are on arms round, begging for food, you must have seen monks maybe in Myanmar begging for food and uh, sometimes really nasty people try to tease us you know yeah. they don't know what they are doing and if about 500 monks went into a fight with these people it will be very chaotic and this is not what the Buddha intended right he he did not want any monk to, because these monks also are human beings, that they may start a fight and it will be a huge war. But instead, you know, also sometimes in the village or towns, you know, sometimes dogs who protect farms, dogs who protect houses can come toward us. And we, we don't have any way to protect ourselves. All we have is loving kindness and completely rely on that. But loving kindness also um, means that you don't put yourself in unprotected or insecure. How do I say it? Like in forests where there are wild elephants mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that you get killed because of your lack of awareness of the surroundings. So the Buddha says, avoid those places. And uh, the only safe weapon that you can use, especially when someone angry is talking to you, is to be you know, loving to that person. That person is needing that love. So loving and you know, instead of fighting or arguing, uh, so with that friendliness that you are showing, maybe that person calms down and will not continue to bother bother you. 
but you never know also looking at one's own mind even when your body is being harmed so that your mind is protected and that links with the concept of being born again in case your body is no more with you if it, if somebody goes to that extreme and you still have loving kindness in your mind your future birth will be very pleasant in a heavenly abode so that is that is also there and that those stories are found in the teaching that hate crimes happen but you have loving kindness is inevitable happening and you can't escape that place but then they radiate loving kindness to the to whoever is doing it they mostly know who is doing it many many enemies were friends before they became enemies or oh, now you call them frenemies <laughs> <laughs> and that you you rain, ra- radiate loving kindness and loving kindness to them so you protect your mind and that at the end of that inevitable day you are born in a tavatin the heaven or any, any place that there is happiness much better than you know that person state of mind mm-hmm. yeah it's difficult you know in one of the teachings in majjhimanikai 40 41 21 i think it's about the simile of the soul but they give an extreme example simile that says that if somebody cuts your body with a la- large saw you know the those big saws saws they use for cutting large trees mm-hmm. uh but they said even then don't think bad about that person it's so hard <laughs> right <laughs> but it shows how you know how important it is to protect your mind from visiting defilements mm-hmm. i would say visiting defilements you know it's um, nothing outside can harm us when we have right weapons right mm-hmm. kind of care right kind of security good walls built that they don't get like a roof that is well well touched that no rain gets into the floors to your walls so that you get good peaceful abiding in that day It's like that um yeah so i think the idea of weapon definitely came maybe from commentaries you know they wrote them <clears throat> the buddha may, may not have used that word <laughs> we need to also not think um, that everything we see in this uh, story are true or but the buddha has said things like you know uh hmm. what cut cut uh, don't cut the trees uh, but kill the forest and that may think <clears throat> make somebody think that oh he's telling to destroy the forest but the who they talking about forest of defilements but that's not the best example i was trying to um there's there's a story uh called puttamanta sutta in it these two parents are crossing a desert and they only have very last stretch and they have a child they don't have any food and it says that to survive the last stretch unwillingly they had to kill the child and it says that the buddha asked the intention of these parents and intention is to feel uh, fill the body fill you no know, fill the tummy 
not to kill the you know it's it's a very delicate place to think you know how can you think like that right how intention matters so um so yeah there are stories like that that say it's like this hunter's wife who was there till she was supporting the hunter and the buddha saying although she supported the hunter uh, her intention was was to support the husband not to kill animals so linking that with that previous story the intention was to feed you know feed their bodies not to kill the child so it's a very delicate subject yes. only a buddha can explain <laughs> that to a normal human being uh, and the other in that hunter story the buddha said if you don't have a wound in your hand you can touch poison and mm-hmm. poison won't enter your body same way like that hunter's wife didn't have any any bad intention that my husband will take these bows and kill animals you know she did not want to do any killing she the buddha said she has the she has entered the path she never will have any of those intentions so it's a very interesting path it it is also maybe we can link that with the the story of the serial killer i was not intending to speak all these things <laughs> who was freed at the end you know, in the teachings of the buddha saying that um he did all those killing is guided by his teacher but now he is a buddhist monk and is free from all those killing and that that guy his name is angulimala did all the meditation and became an arahant that is the that is the purest state of being but people did not forgive him they threw stones at him when he went begging for food that is his karma but in in the teachings there is forgiveness for them that it's never too late for you to become a good person so no per- no person is forever a bad person and that it may be perhaps the power of understanding that loving kindness is very harmless but powerful weapon and bodies are fragile that we can kill somebody but the damage of it will last longer if instead one can resort to loving kindness it will be a very different uh, outcome and has more benefit to the giver mm-hmm. more than to the receiver it's like you know see in the danger of anger like you keep something burning in your hand and wanting somebody else to get burnt mm-hmm. it never happens that way. <laughs> or or drinking poison and wanting somebody else to get hurt it doesn't work that way so i think that wisdom also helps us to see how important it is to have loving kindness to avoid certain people situations and live a peaceful life we can easily get anger to harm ourselves and others that's the easy way the difficult way is to like the buddha said this will be the last thing i say <laughs> i will not go on that loving kindness even for a moment of snapping your fingers benefits the being than not having any loving kindness <laughs> anything else you want to bring up um sure i mean there are a few i've heard many small little excerpts um mm-hmm. that i haven't heard before this before and this may be for now for another time yeah <laughs> but i know there's one uh, of anger, it's 
poison storage and honey tip after that's the one thing with translation. I've heard of it, yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how the whole thing goes. Yeah. I've heard that excerpt. And I've heard um, also one with Buddhists speaking about meditating on death. Mm -hmm. And with every breath is the right teaching. Um, and that's also one that I found interesting to practice. Okay. Med meditation. The one where it's um, like letting go, if this was your last, and usually I pray with you, this is my last breath. And um, you find it, you enjoy more present and you let go. Um, <laughs> so those are two which I'm uh, curious to revisit. Yeah, so we do have a, I think that is on Friday night. Bhante Samhita leads meditation on death, mm. the collection of death. It's either Friday or Monday, one of those. So, um, <clears throat> except last Monday, that's the day I gave a talk here. Yeah? Um, but that reminded me of the other quote that comes to my mind time to time that um, death is as close as your breath. That it, before you even finish your in in breath, you may die. <laughs> that's what that's how monks are trained to think, mm -hmm. and that it is a reflection that they should reflect upon continuously, like very often. The honeyed tip. Um, what's the other thing? Honeyed tip. Poison source. Poison salt. Yeah. It's, I think, definitely a teaching that I have heard. Um, it will be interesting to explore and find out more about it. But, yeah, I will be looking for it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you uh, for uh, bringing those up. And uh, also, we will, um, now that you live nearby, <laughs> you're welcome to sit with us and become a regular. <laughs> Yeah, let's transfer merits before we end the session. May the suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu.